In this video, we'll talk about morphine. Morphine is a colloquial painkiller or a drug that can reduce the pain. So it is used as an analgesic. But have you ever wondered how morphine works at a molecular level? What is the effect of morphine in human body? So if you want to know more about it, this video is for you. So morphine is basically a derivative from the poppy plant. So from opium poppy, the sap of the opium poppy contains these natural chemicals which are known as opiates. Morphine is one of them and it's a major component of the opium. So this binds to a specific type of receptor known as opioid receptors. If you want to know more about opioid receptors, there is a separate video linked in the i button. Now morphine works like a full mu opioid receptor agonist. That means it binds to it and augments its activity. Now these mu opioid receptor can bind to morphine and this triggers a G protein couple receptor response. And this is a GI coupled receptor. That means it prevents the adenylate cyclase from generating cyclic AMP. And the another response that it would lead to is opening of certain ion channels leading to efflux of potassium ion. Now that can overall modulate how the neurons are firing in our body. So if we look at the brain, the mu opioid receptors, kappa opioid receptors and delta receptors, which are all receptors for different type of opioids are distributed all over the brain like anterior cingulate cortex, prefrontal cortex, amygdala, nucleus accumbens, parietal cortex, dorsal striatum, ventral tegmental area, medulla and many other places in the central nervous system. So it's important to know that among these receptors, morphine acts like a full agonist towards the mu receptor. Now in the spinal cord, Opioid receptors, especially the mu opioid receptors, are present in the dorsal horn and it has role in terms of modulating pain. I'll explain why. So you know, whenever there is a pain, imagine this lady has broke, uh, broke, broke her leg. So basically she would be in immense pain right now. Morphine can actually relieve her overall pain sensation. It can actually modify the pain sensation and thereby producing an analgesic effect. It's important to know that morphine cannot cure the cause of the pain, but it can change the perception of our brain towards a certain stimuli that is causing the pain. Let me explain how. So our brain basically senses the pain via elongated pathway known as the direct and indirect pathway. So there is an ascending pathway that ascending pathway takes the sensory input from peripheral organs and moves through the spinal cord, medulla, midbrain and ultimately relay that information to the somatosensory cortex. So basically it's a pain sensing pathway and morphine actually blocks this pain sensation pathway. And there is also a descending pathway which is a pain modulator pathway. It acts like a regulator of a fan. So it sort of regulates how or how much information about pain would be relayed to the brain. So what happens is after binding to the mu opioid receptors in the dorsal horn, morphine prevents the pain perception to reach to the brain and thereby reducing the sensation of the pain. Morphine also enhances inhibitory control on this circuit by positively regulating the descending pathway. Now other effects of the morphine includes euphoria, that means feeling of happiness. And this is happening because there is an area in the brain known as ventral tegmental area. And this area has a dopaminergic pathway, which is known as the mesocortical pathway. So dopaminergic neurons from this area projects to several part of the cortex. And increased dopamine release give you the feeling of satiety and euphoria. So feeling of happiness, right? So then it has effect on respiration. It acts like a respiratory depression agent. And how it is possible? 
because morphine acts on specific region of the brain. Um, this is known as pre botzinger complex. And this complex is known to generate the respiratory rhythm. So when the respiratory rhythm generator is kind of inhibited, the overall respiration becomes slower and the rhythm is altered. So that is why morphine has to be used with caution because at overdose and in case of abuse, it can lead to repres respiratory depression, which might be fatal in case of some patients. So this is the punchline. Now it can lead to meiosis, also known as pinpoint pupils. So the pupil would be constricted like a pin in the eye. And why does that happen? Because there are specific mu opioid receptors present in the edinger westphal nucleus in the midbrain that is triggered by morphine. So in the midbrain, there are oculomotor nerves. And in these oculomotor nerve complex, morphine can bind. This actually increase the parasympathetic outflow via the oculomotor nerve ultimately leading to the constriction of the pupil and by actually triggering the sphincter pupillae muscles that are sort of uh, are, uh, that are small muscles present in the eye. Now you can see that there are other effects of morphine. So it can stimulate an area known as area postrema in the brain and it activates the vomiting center in the medulla. So that means it sort of creates a nausea-like feeling in case of overdose or people who are not supposed to take morphine. Morphine slows the gastric emptying and GI motility, which may be even sort of worse than the nausea, right? If too much things are accumulated in your stomach, then there are chances that you would actually puke, right? So overall, one has to remember that area postrema is modulated by the morphine. Morphine has cardiac effect, but not a severe one. In case of overdose, things might be visible. So there are changes in preload. Preload basically decreases. Morphine causes vasodilation via the release of a comp compound known as histamine. Uh, histamine is released by the mast cells. In terms of afterload, there could be also decrease. And basically this is due to mild arterial dilation. And sometimes um, the morphine can actually regulate the vagal stimulation. Also their effect in, in terms of cardiac output is not that similar. Morphine is more pronounced in terms of its respiratory outcomes. Morphine can trigger histamine release from the mast cells. Histamines are potential modulator of allergy. It can lead to multiple effect. So histamine triggers bronchoconstrictions. That means the bronchioles, the small airways in the lung, that gets smaller and smaller. That means it makes it difficult to breathe. For people who are suffering from asthma, COPD, etc., they should not take morphine for this particular reason. Morphine has effect on our hormonal axis. It can affect the pituitary gonad axis, so it reduces the gonadotropin release. So LH and FSH levels would be dropped, right? So when LH and FSH is dropped, estrogen, testosterone, all of these kind of sex, sex hormone or sex corticoids would not be released at a greater quantity. That means it would lead to menstrual irregularities in women and also decrease in libido in both the sexes. Also, it can modulate the pituitary, hypothalamus and adrenal axis, which is responsible for secreting the anti-stress hormone cortisol. So it lead to decrease in cortisol and it decreases cortisol level by suppressing the CRH and ACTH release. So overall, let's talk about the absorption and the roots of um, basically administration of morphine. It could be intramuscular, intravenous, subcutaneous or oral. Intramuscular and intravenous is good. So oral bio bioavailability is quite low because um, there is a first pass metabolism in the liver that reduces the bioavailability of this particular drug. Now, if we talk about the onset of action in IV injection, it acts the fastest, like within five minutes. In intramuscular, within 10 to 30 minutes. And in oral, it's the most delayed route because it goes to the liver, get metabolized, and then it can function. So when, it talk, when we talk about distribution, volume distribution is 2.2 to 5 
L per kg. Plasma protein binding capability is 30 to 35 percent. It can cross the blood brain barrier and definitely can reach the brain. So obviously it has effect on the brain. So it would has it has to reach the brain, right? Okay. So basically it can also cross the placenta. That means the barrier between mother and the, the interface between the mother and the fetus. It can cross it and sometimes it can lead to fetal respiratory depression and uh, problems in uh, fetus. So overall, so there is a change in the metabolism um, of uh, morphine in the liver. So you can see that in the liver there are two compounds of morphine that are produced. One is morphine 3-glucuronide, which is an inactive form of neurotoxicity. And then there is morphine 6-glucuronide, which is an active and more potent analgesic form of the morphine. Now anyway, its uh, excretion is happening via the kidneys. So renal excretion can happen for both M3G and M6G. But accumulation of the, these uh, particular metabolic intermediates could be quite uh, risky and toxic for the body. So I hope this video was good enough and it was informative. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.